February 28th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Luke chapter 15 from the New Testament. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming to hear him, but the Pharisees and the experts in the law were complaining, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So Jesus told them this parable, Which one of you, if he has a hundred sheep and loses one of them, would not leave the ninety-nine in the open pasture and go looking for the one that is lost until he finds it? Then when he has found it, he places it on his shoulders, rejoicing. Returning home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, telling them, Rejoice with me, because I have found my sheep that was lost. I tell you, in the same way there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous people who have no need to repent. Or what woman, if she had ten silver coins and loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search thoroughly until she finds it? Then when she is found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. In the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. Then Jesus said, A man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the estate that will belong to me. So he divided his assets between them. After a few days, the younger son gathered together all he had and left on a journey to a distant country. And there he squandered his wealth with a wild lifestyle. Then after he had spent everything, a severe famine took place in that country and he began to be in need. So he went and worked for one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He was longing to eat the carob pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired workers have food enough to spare, but here I am dying from hunger. I will get up and I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired workers. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way from home, his father saw him, and his heart went out to him, and he ran, and he hugged his son and kissed him. Then his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Hurry, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate. Because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they begin to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field. As he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the slaves and asked what was happening. The slave replied, Your brother has returned and your father has killed the fattened calf because he got his son back safe and sound. But the older son became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and appealed to him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have worked like a slave for you, and I never disobeyed your commands. Yet you never gave me even a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your assets with prostitutes, you kill the fattened calf for him? Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and everything that belongs to me is yours. It was appropriate to celebrate and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. God, I so love this story. I've heard it a million times. I remember even acting out in Sunday school. I wonder if the Pharisees ever truly understood that you were talking to them when you were talking about the older son and how he was fussing and being a brat and being entitled and acting arrogant. I wonder if they caught on that that's that's who Jesus was talking to. I I don't know. But I do love this story because it talks about how no matter how far away from you we meander or sometimes run or push you away, that no matter how far we go, even to the point of this young man who went to another country 
and pretty much celebrated his life over there with drink and prostitutes. And I'm sure his friends helped him spend all of his inheritance, his friends in quotes. Definitely living for the world, and yet once everything was gone, instead of going home, probably just out of purely being ashamed of the situation he had gotten himself into and fearful of what his father would say, he went and worked for a Gentile as the person who feeds pigs. Now, for a Jewish person, this is lower than low than the lowest. These were unclean animals and he was having to feed them. This is what sin does to us in our lives. This is how much it pushes us away from you. This is how much we choose to walk away from a relationship with you or run away from a relationship with you and get caught up in the world. The enticement of, of alcohol and women and ego and money and prestige. We forget. Until we, until we're living with the pigs and the pigs are actually eating better than we are. And then something in our heart tugs us back to you. And we remember that you promised to always forgive us, to always love us, to always, no matter what we have done in our lives, no sin can separate us from you because your son died on the cross for us. And I can just imagine what this young man, probably 17-ish, how he felt walking back to his family's home. He probably thought about his brother who would be laughing at him for having squandered all his money. His dad, who would be incredibly disappointed, angry, and maybe not even let him return to the house. People in his village to make fun of him and laugh at him. He had so much, and look how little he now has. It must have been a very long walk back to, back to the house. But as we're dragging our feet, heading back into a situation that we have no idea what we're about to get into or what the repercussions are going to be or how angry you're going to be. Instead, before we even get there, you are already running towards us with your arms open. We can barely get our apologies out for the sins that we have committed. We can barely confess them before your arms are wrapped around us and the forgiveness is just pouring over us with grace and with mercy. You are so excited to have us back. You love us so much. And I'm sure, just like the young man did in the story, I'm sure we stand there just baffled. There's nobody here on earth who loves us that way. There's nobody here on earth who forgives us that way. There's nobody here on earth who shows us grace in that way. Yet without a question, not only are we welcomed back, but you actually celebrate us coming back. God, I just pray for everybody listening today that if they have sins in their life that are putting a wall between them and you and a relationship with you. I just ask that they realize that just with a single confession to you that that wall just comes tumbling down and your arms just immediately wrap around them in instant forgiveness of all their sins. We should never let sin stop us from having a relationship with you. Then why in the world did you sacrifice your son on the cross for us? 
if we're going to let that stop us from having a relationship with you. So God, I just pray for their hearts today. I pray that they know without question that your arms are open wide, that you're running towards them right now. And they are so welcome to come back and be part of your family. And there'll be huge celebration and great rejoicing, not just their friends, but you with your grace, with your unconditional love. And with your acceptance of us back into the family. God, I, st I still don't get how all this works. I can't imagine a love like what you have for us. I can't imagine pure forgiveness like what you have for us. Because we we are broken and imperfect. And, and we, we can't do those types of things. <laughs> but I am in awe of it. And I am stunned by it. And I am very thankful that you love us so much to always want what's, what is best for us, to always seek out a relationship with us, to always want to wrap your arms around us, to always want to celebrate the relationship you have with us. Just like you said, it's appropriate to celebrate and be glad for your brother was dead and now he's alive. God, today, just break down those walls, open your arms, and let these people come back home. We just love you so much. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <laughs>